So some of you guys know my rule when we're fly fishing. It's the rule of 300. And that is that anywhere a 300 pound man can get is no good fishing. That's like bridges, culverts, walking trails, the whole nine yards. You wanna know how I know I'm past the rule of 300 today? Cause Texas over here, federal law enforcement <laughs> can't even get service with his Garmin. What's up guys, this is Seth from Darkwater's Fly Shop. This is my new friend, Texas. Uh, <laughs> this is Michael. Uh, we're gonna go out today, we're doing a full day trip. This is gonna be pretty sweet. We're getting them way out in the bush. That's not the bush yet. We're gonna fish on some historically acclaimed water up here in the UP. We're gonna keep you posted on this. We may do a catch and cook, which would be kind of cool. A lot of brook trout in this section. How many times have you been fly fishing? Zero. All right, so this guy has been fly fishing zero times. We are gonna see how many brook trout we can get this dude during the day. That's a nice fish. That's bigger than anything else we've had all day. Let him, if he wants to fight, let him fight. Bro, that is awesome. Up, up, up. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, oh. Oh, that's my first ever trout. Dude, okay, so like, this is the thing. He smashed that. Dude, he smashed it. He, you're absolutely right, he smashed that. Dude, so just so you know, this fish, that's the first brook trout that you've ever caught. That's a 12 inch brook trout right there. Don't reel in all the way, that's good right there. That's oh, a 12 sorry. inch brook trout right there. Dude, that is that is absolutely something to be just Holy incredibly shit. proud of. Okay, so that was first that was first fish of the day, Texas. Just yeah, champion. How did that feel? <laughs> it felt great. Yeah, it felt awesome. So first first fish in the fly rod was a UP brook trout, man. It's so awesome. This gorgeous water here. Um, that was probably about a 12 inch fish. There, smashed it. Yeah, smashed it. There's not a lot of really big brook trout in here. Like, you know, that 12 inch mark is a really nice fish for this river. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna keep fishing. We got one on the board. We're gonna see how many we can get today. Keep going? Yep. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I go over with Texas here when we're out here is the roll cast. For those of you that are experienced fly fishermen, you guys know what's going on. Okay, and then what I'm going to have you do is come on up this way. I'm going to have you stand right up here. Now that he knows what he's doing with the roll cast, I'm going to start moving him up some water a little bit. I'm going to have him throw into these riffles right here. Another roll cast. There you go. And you can even, yep, you, like you did, you let a little bit of line out. Good job. Rod tip down, strip some line in, put it through your control hand. So if something hits, there he is. Good job. <laughs> Got him. Right there. Boom. There he goes. Right on, that's number two. You heard me say that this is a historical river that we're fishing. Uh, there's some pretty cool stories out there that you can find about the upper peninsula of fish camps. These were properties that were owned by the feds back in the day and they parceled out various um, properties for people to have camps. You know, like you open the UP, you got deer camps and stuff, but we had fish camps up here, which were guys that had cabins and saunas and outhouses and stuff, super rustic cabins on the side of these rivers. And what happened is it was sold to, uh, I don't know if it was like Wisconsin Energies or Upco or something, I think Upco. And um, they grandfathered out the deeds. And so what you have now is if you put in the time and you put in the hiking, um, you're actually able to come back here and see some of these old cabins that are along the riverbank. And um, it's pretty wild. You're dealing with some pretty cool stuff. The memories that must have been made in some of these places are just 
absolutely mind blowing. And then let it pause. Oh, is that a, yes. <laughs> what I tell you, <laughs> what I tell you boss. What is it? Number three or number four? This is three. Three. If we land it. Oh, we got it. <laughs> exactly what you said. I did it. Bam. Listen to the guide. Awesome. Boom! <laughs> there you go. I was just going to say back cast, but you got it. Strip, 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 strip. That's a fish. Oh, good fish. Nice. Line management. Yep, grab it with your control hand. That's why it's always important to have it with, have the line go through. Okay, that's good. Don't pull them up anymore. There's the fish. Good looking fish. Five fish. That one felt just it just felt right. It did everything. Yeah, he did. Look at that one's got a misformed gill. What happened? So I, I was trying to undo the knot and it, it smashed it right next to my leg. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny, man. Literally right next to the leg as I was trying to undo this knot. What's up, guys? So we've got double digits now. We've got 10 fish on the board. Uh, kind of getting into prime time. And we, I had something kind of bad happen. Um, I went to switch to dries and uh, I went to put my floatant on a fly. I reached down for my floatant and it was gone. So if you're fishing uh, this river ever, don't name it. <laughs> if you're ever fishing this river and you find some, uh, or if you're in Lake Superior and you find uh, some gink floatant with a um, loon uh, little gink holder, um, I'll claim it, totally. So we switched back to the muddler, which is gonna work. We're gonna keep catching fish in the muddler. I'm just really bummed out that I lost my floating because, um, you know, we caught a couple on dries, but you just gotta keep switching flies and it kind of sucked. So uh, we're, con <laughs> that was another fish. We're content with the muddler minnow right now. So we're hanging out. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you some more fish. This dude has put uh, 20 fish on the board today. He's at 20. So um, that's what we got going on. We're gonna fish for a little bit longer. Um, hopefully we get another one that's uh, legal size because we'll do a catch and cook. Um, we're just, uh, we're catching a lot of smaller fish today. You know, just full of, this river's full of them, but uh, it's a great place to take guys for the first time fly fishing. I mean, come on, brook trout, dude put 20 on the board in a matter of hours. So uh, we're gonna keep rolling here. I'm a little bit bummed out that that floatant took a drink because um, I got mayflies going off all over the place. Just another um, point, tip for you guys, a pointer. You see these dragonflies? I'm not sure if you can see them or not, but there's dragonflies zipping around all over the place. Uh, a good indication of what the other bugs are doing that you're trying to mimic is what the dragonflies are doing. If the dragonflies are really, really close to the bottom, uh, or sorry, really close to the water, that indicates that there's either a hatch just starting of emergers or um, they're landing and there's a spinner fall. If you see the flies up real high up, that can indicate what type of bug is hatching, maybe a Hendrickson or a green drake. And then um, if they're real close to the water like this, we're dealing with some sulfur, some bigger mayflies. So just a tip for you guys, 
uh, watch the dragonflies to key in on what the rest of the bugs are doing because uh, they're fishing too. There's one for the catch and cook. Yeah. yeah. This is what happens when you uh, take somebody from the National Guard fishing, especially <laughs> active. What else do you do, federal law enforcement? We destroy things. You destroy things? Yeah. That's your taxpayer money going to good use right there. <laughs> Police brutality. <laughs> All right, guys, we got our two brook trout here that are both 12 inches. Uh, I got some tin foil with me. We're going to do a catch and cook here. I, um, this is the first time I've ever done this because typically I'm releasing every single fish that I catch. But for the sake of the UP experience here for my buddy in Texas, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna go and just do a little tiny fire, just enough to keep the, get that tin foil hot. You don't need to do much at all to cook that brook trout. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear a little bit of this bark up. I got some sticks and stuff, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get it rolling for you guys. Pick it up, all the way down like that. Oh my God. What do you think of that? It's excellent. <laughs> it's a rarity that we don't do it often. You got a special treat, Texas. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for your service. <laughs> I roll out the red carpet, man. My very first trout. Right on. We roll it out for uh, those that are serving our country. This is the way we do it. This is pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, guys, so this has been uh, really cool. Uh, I think we're going to be able to make a pretty sweet video out of this. Do me a favor and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Share the video. Darkwatersflyshop.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, so hit us up. If you want to come do a trip like this, I'd love it. If you'd like to maybe gift somebody uh, a trip to do something like this, it'd be awesome. So, uh, as you saw today, man, the, the veterans get special treatment. <laughs> and, and, uh, but we have a ball, so thanks for watching, guys. Hey, guys, by the way, you probably can't even see me right now. I'm not worried about the lighting. This brother caught at least 25 fish today, first time fly fishing. Pretty dope, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right on. Okay, again, make sure you subscribe. <laughs>